This video goes over the Dialog System's standard Dialog UI. The Dialog Manager prefab, by default, points to a basic standard template Dialog UI. It looks like this during play. It's intended to be customized by you to look the way you want. The Dialog UI's main component is standard Dialog UI. It has subtitle panels and menu panels, each of which have their own components. The NPC subtitle panel has a standard UI subtitle panel. And the response menu panel has a standard UI menu panel. The quickest way to change the look of your dialog is to swap out the dialog UI. The dialog system includes several templates. The focus template focuses on the speaker and defocuses the listener. The JRPG template is laid out like a typical JRPG. Letterbox is a cinematic style. WRPG is a traditional Western style RPG layout. This UI is configured to accumulate the text so that the player can scroll back and review lines. The dialog system also includes some professionally designed UIs. You've seen the wheel UI from the demo scene. Runic is perhaps a better choice for this scene. This is just a customized version of the Western RPG template. Next, we'll set up a dialogue UI from scratch. We'll start with the Custom Character 2D Volume 2 asset that can be purchased off of the Asset Store. I've set up a scene that uses the Template Visual Novel Dialog UI. It looks like this. Our end result is going to look like this. Since this video is about setting up the standard dialog UI component and not about UI layouts themselves, I've set up a scene that already includes the UI element layout. We have a dialog UI game object with several UI elements, such as a continue button and subtitle panels. If you need to learn how to lay out elements in Unity UI, I recommend watching Unity's Unity UI tutorials. The first step is to add a standard dialog UI component. We'll assign the alert panel and alert text elements first. And we'll also assign the main dialog panel. I forgot to show it, but these two need UI panel components. 
Next, we'll need to set up the subtitle panels and menu panel. We'll start with the menu panel. I left this inactive to make it easier to see the subtitle text. We activate it and then add a standard UI menu panel. We'll assign the panel element and the slider. And next we need to assign the response button. The response button needs a standard UI response button component. We'll assign its elements. And we'll assign it to the buttons on click. Then assign the response button template to the menu panel's button template field and assign content as the button template holder. Also assign the scroll bar in case the menu is bigger than one screen. Now we can assign the response menu panel to the standard dialog UI. Assign it as element zero and as the default menu panel. We'll hide that and then we'll work on subtitle panel zero. Add a standard UI subtitle panel. Assign the panel, portrait image and name, and we'll assign the shared UI elements, subtitle panel and continue button that are shared among all three subtitle panels. The continue button needs a standard UI continue button fast forward so that it can fast forward the typewriter text when clicked. Assign that to the buttons on click event. If you don't want to fast forward, you can set the continue buttons click event to call the dialog UIs on continue method instead. Next, tick use animated portraits and set visibility to always from start. That's it for subtitle panel zero. We'll do the same for subtitle panel one. And now we'll set up subtitle panel two. This one is similar to the others, except it will only become visible when the character first speaks. Now we can assign these subtitle panels to the standard dialog UI. Panel zero will be the default NPC subtitle panel and one will be the default PC panel. The last thing to do is to set up animated portraits. On each of the characters, I've added a dialog actor and assigned an animator controller that animates sprite-based animation in a UI image element. To see it, we can add that animator controller to one of the images and preview it in the animation window. Here we can see the player blink at idle and also play a talk animation. And now we can test it out. I'm going to make the window a little bit wider. The UI elements are controlled by the standard dialog UI component and you can see that the characters are animated. The dialog entries use animator play sequencer commands to set the animator states. And that's the standard dialog UI.